Happy Thursday, everyone. Before I kick off this video, if you want to see how we did the actual turning profile with lathe tooling, don't forget to check out Turning Tuesday. We actually covered how we actually roughed out this part and everything, and created all our finished profiles. This video is aimed at the milling portion of mill turn only. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into this. So as you can see, all my paths are already here from the Tuesday actual case. We want to make sure we activate our setup to start with. And with that setup activated, we're going to go ahead and switch to the milling tab. And we're going to start with, in my opinion, I like to always come in on the face of the part and always shoot for the easy stuff first. So if I go ahead and go down here where we did our finished profile, you can see my stock has already been turned. So let's go in and create our drilling profile. So I'm going to go in, we're going to drill. I'm going to go out and grab a nice spot drill. In this case, I have my 3H drilling speeds and feeds here. Now on my geometry tab, I'm going to pick one of my holes and then I'm gonna say select same size diameter. So now we're gonna go around our part automatically and drill all those spot drills as you can see. Now, one thing I can do noticing based on clearance and everything, I could actually change my clearance height here to drop my cycle time down. Again, if we go into that tool path and we go to our heights tab, so we have a feed height, which is our top height, and that's coming from our whole top. However, our retract height is currently set to stock top. Now, again, personal opinion, I prefer to leave it there. Now, if I'm really worried about cycle time and had to run, you know, a thousand of these, I may actually change this down to the feed height and kind of stack them all together. Or vice versa is I can actually go even further into my part if I wanted to. So if I take this and drag this all down, as you're going to see, is we can dramatically change where we wrap it up and out and around. Given that this is a lathe part, we are rotating the part. The tooling is going to stay still. We should be more than safe with this. Again, let's go back and do our drilling now. So I'm going to go pick my drill tool path. If I actually put my tool on the surface I'm looking to drill, you're going to notice that it's going to call out a 0.25 quarter inch drill. So we're going to go out and select our quarter inch drill. Here it is in my library. Again, we're going for those aluminum speeds and feeds that I have preset. I'm going to pick the cylinder face. And then same thing, same size hole diameter. If I wanted to change my clearance heights, I could. The key element that I'm really looking for here is we don't want to go to the bottom of the hole. We want to go past that. So we're going to go ahead and drill tip that. And then we're going to add in, you know, a little bit of breakthrough. I'm going to go with 30. And as you can see, we're now breaking through the bottom of our part, making it much easier for everything that we're going to do on the backside. So again, drilling, super simple, super easy to do based off what we have going on. As you can see here, it looks like we do have a little bit of a collision also happening. Or that could just be my graphics card. Let's take an investigation by just grabbing both of our tool paths and simulate it with the machine and see if for some reason we are making contact. So as you can see here, we are definitely making contact when we wrap it in from hole to hole. Again, remember how I did this actual clearance height situation? So that did cause my tool to hit based on the diameter of my part actually be bigger than where my tool is sitting when it drills those holes. So let's fix that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that tool path. Again, we could actually bump those heights up if you guys wanted. It's really up to each and every one of you and the way you wanna go about it. I'm gonna change this back to stock top and zero just to speed up this tutorial. So again, we go through, we're gonna go ahead and grab both those surfaces. As you can see, we have no collision points now just looking at the stock model that's being generated. So we should be more than safe to run with what we have. So now let's go in and let's look at milling out our slots. So there's a lot of way to mill out those slots. I'm gonna go in and I'm actually just going to go with a 2D pocket. And in the 2D pocket, I'm gonna use a 3 8 tool, which is a little bit smaller than my pocket. And then from that, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the actual pocket profile. So to make my life easy based on looking at this part, let's go ahead and get back to the home position and basically use the one that's orientated to this flat. Now that's something I like to personally do. It just makes it a little bit easier for anything that I have to do on this pocket after the fact. I always have my reference point. So we went ahead and picked our closed chain. We're gonna go ahead and do as you guys may guess, we're just gonna hit okay and see what we get. And just like that, we are wrapping down quite a bit. And it looks like we're not really doing much to the upper profile of this part as we go down inside there. So one thing I could do here, and this is kind of a neat trick, is we could actually go in 
And I am going to base that off adding multiple depths. And then we're going to make those, you know, one times diameter, right? So let's just say 375. Again, we're still ramping down and we're almost just cutting air with this very first kind of section. So we're just wasting a ton of time machining. We can take a look at that here. So we're wasting almost five minutes on doing this pocket based on my speeds and feet. Again, we do have to do this with a smaller tool than expected just because on most lathes, the live tooling situation is much lower horsepower and a lot less torque. So that's why I went with that pocket clearing. Now, we could go back and let's take a look at this doing a 3D pocket clearing. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to a selection. Again, selecting that pocket. And what you're gonna notice here is because of the rest machining, what's gonna happen is, is it's naturally going to trim that upper portion for me. So again, because rest machining is actually kind of interfering with itself here, we're gonna drag this above our 2D pocket. And now regenerating that. And now you can see that initial going into my part is much cleaner, much easier to deal with. However, we are going all the way down to the bottom of my part profile here. And we don't need to in this case. We could actually stop that short. So again, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say, change our bottom height. And I am gonna take a selection. And again, we're gonna tilt around here. I'm gonna grab that edge. And then what you're gonna notice is based on that edge, we are using the highest point of that edge. So I need to drop that down a little bit further. Again, you guys can be a lot more precise with this. I'm manually just dragging it down to get to where I want to be going. But the nice thing is, is we've actually dropped that cycle time a little bit. And in this case, it's not reflecting because we are making a lot of extra moves to go in and out and retract and loop around, which could be something that also affects how you guys choose to program this. Again, based on that 2D pocket, we have a pretty good speed and feed setup for doing this, and that works quite well versus our actual 3D pocket, which looks like it's gonna take a lot more time because we are making a lot more retract moves back in. We are getting to a point where we're almost too deep in the part where it needs to do a actual retract based off that information. So again, is we can adjust a lot of things here. So everything from maximum stay down, Again, we could change that to 30. We could actually change our safe distance as well so that we can get much cleaner, much deeper, much nicer tool paths and hopefully reduce our cycle time even more. But again, as you're seeing, this may be the better approach is just to use 2D Pocket. Now, the third way I'm gonna show you on here is given that we're actually going to contour these, I'm gonna do my 2D contour here. Again, I am going to change my top height. So this is, again, is we could actually say I want to start right here at this top height. And again, it's always the highest point of the edge that you picked. And then from that, if we were to do actually a ramp into this part, we can utilize just a simple 2D contour while ramping down to be able to knock out everything on those walls and clean everything up in one shot. So again, this might be an even faster approach much easier for you to accommodate. So I'm gonna remove those other two. But as you can see, just doing a simple 2D ramp down into the part makes a big difference at the end of the day. So now we're gonna pattern this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to setup and I'm gonna say new pattern. And we're gonna go ahead and say a circular pattern around center. And then I am going to do 12 of those because that is my pattern recorded. And just like that, we're now doing that 12 times around the outside of my part. So now that we've done everything basically on the face of this part, and I can see so, or see, see how by actually clicking that tool path in the pattern, is we can now pivot to doing the X kind of direction outside profile. Again, this profile is gonna require an XY machine. However, that's gonna be more than okay. Again, if you guys don't have an XY machine, Monday, I'm actually gonna show you how to kind of program this up using a fourth axis on a mill. So if you had to actually mill these pockets separate with them being off center and being big flat areas like that versus what we're doing here, which could be done with a ZX machine only, that's gonna be all right. So let's go ahead and pivot over. We're gonna go again, not to post-process, we're gonna hit milling. And then this time again, we're gonna go for a 2D adaptive clearing. Now the key element here is, again, I'm gonna use the home position to make my life easy for being able to pick these faces. 
but I need to set my tool orientation before anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my Z axis and then I'm gonna pick my X axis. And on your machine, this could make a big difference. So you do need to pay attention to how you're orientating your actual work coordinates here. And then from that, we're gonna pick our pocket. So as you can see, we now have our pocket selected. We have all of our actual settings for our tool orientation. And then because I am using optimal load that came through with my tool path, we can utilize that to our advantage. So as you can see, we're now coming in and we're hitting the side of this real quick to be able to clean that all up and get it roughed out. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and finish this out, but I am gonna use finish to do the floor and the walls all in one shot. So again, we're gonna go 2D contour. Again, we need to set our tool orientation. So again, Z, picking my X down here. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna select our contour and we're gonna see what we get. So at first, we're gonna go in and we're gonna machine that out. But what you're gonna notice is we have this lovely island in here. And we're also plunging down right on that face, which is not gonna be good on the tool or the finish of this part. So let's go back and fix it. So we're gonna go back to that 2D contour. We're gonna go back to our passes tab. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do a tangential extension here. And the reason for it is I wanna extend both the start and the finish. And there's only one chain here. I don't have to change several different changes. I'm just gonna use these ones here. So now we have that. We're gonna go in and I'm actually gonna add multiple finishing passes. And I'm gonna use a 0.25 step over and I'm gonna throw in here 50. So this is again, fusion working to your advantage. So even though I said 50 finishing passes, it took the math from the number of step overs to calculate based on that step over long before the number of actual finishing passes. So now that we've done that, you can see we're going in nice and clean, coming right back out, cleaning up the bottom floor of this, all while putting our wall finish on that part. So let's do our drilling now. So again, as I'm gonna go drill, I am using a 3 8 drill, and this is a 3 8 hole here. So once we get orientated, so again, we're gonna say Z to this face, X based on here, and then if I go in and I highlight, that's a 3 8 diameter hole. It's not a critical hole on my drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use my end mill again. If I had an end mill mounted in my machine in this direction, you could also go in and bore this, you could drill it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. However, in this case, we're gonna go in with that actual 3 8 drill. I'm gonna come down into my part. I am gonna go through the bottom just a hair. And one thing I am forgetting is if we zoom in here, it might be a little tricky to see. Let's get squared up to the front. Notice how we're starting down below that face. And the reason for that is, is because we don't have auto merge hole segment turned on. Now, I see a lot of people make the mistake where they don't use auto merge hole segment. What they're doing is they're changing from hole top to a selected face. To me, checking that box is much easier than changing where my surface starts and finishes. So from here, if I wanted to, we could also do you know, a chip breaking, which is gonna give me some pecking if we wanted to peck that with that end mill. But as you're seeing is I'm using the end mill right now to go in and drill out that hole based on the settings that I have in Fusion. So now let's go back and let's chamfer that hole. So again, is I'm gonna go 2D contour. Let's go ahead and pick the lower chain. Notice how my chain's the wrong direction all because I failed to pick tool orientation. So again, Z, X, and from there, we're gonna jump over to our passes tab. And as you're gonna see is because I didn't grab a spot drill yet, let's go back and grab my spot drill, guys. The secret menu is not shown up. And that secret menu is this chamfer menu. We wanna give that a little bit of an offset as well. So as you can see, we're machining down and away from that actual lower chain at a 45 degree angle to match that chamfer. So again, we did everything we need to do that one little landing here. We're gonna take all this information and we're gonna do a pattern. Again, a circular pattern around center. And we need three of these. And just like that, we're now machining around the outside of our part and getting everything taken care of. So I am gonna grab my two spindle, or my spindle grab and my spindle return here, guys. And we're gonna place that down below in our ordering. So again, as we're gonna do our drilling, 
And then we're going to go in and we're going to knock out those pockets. Then we're going to go through and we're actually going to machine those landings and then do our spindle grab and our spindle retract. So let's simulate this. So I'm going to grab all of this and we're just going to go ahead and say simulation. And from that, we're going to go ahead and square up to the top of our part. Makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So there's our roughing. There's our finishing. There's all of our spot drilling. Here's our milling coming in. So we're not seeing any collisions yet. We are seeing my computer struggle a little bit just because I'm trying to go way too fast that I have my accuracy probably way too high for this. But as we're walking through this, this does give me a great time to express the fact that if you guys are loving content like this, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to get the latest updates when we release content. And at this point, we're releasing content five times a week. We're doing everything from the milling, the turning, to different workflows that we've seen across our customer base. And just like that, this is done. So at a quick glance, I'm not seeing any red. I'm not seeing anything that looks like a collision in my timeline down here at the bottom. So everything checks good on this part to be able to actually go to the machine and run it. So with leaving you on that is, as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. But before I go, I do have to say, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And the good news is, is you guys all know me, Phil Brown at JIT CAD CAM, and we are here to support you in any way we can. And we just want to let you know that we do offer selling Fusion 360 as well as custom one-on-one -on -one sessions to on-site actual training based on your needs and wants as a company or even as an individual. So with that, have a great rest of your day.